Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. This is going to start off with a little bit of me finishing up the bolts uh, for the clamps, and also a little bit of polishing, and then I get it to machining the two main platforms, the, the two really hard things that I was concerned about that I needed these clamps for. And then I promise on Friday I'll get back to a fish video. I actually have some interesting results for uh, the underground filters. Uh, but, uh, I just wanted to get this uh, project going because I actually really do need it. So these are the four clamps. I started polishing and then I got a little silly with polishing. And I polished a little too more than I think I should have. And then I realized that it, it's their clamps. They're going to get abused. So I, I stopped short of polishing the actual hex bolts because uh, that does seem really silly. Now what I need to do before I actually put something on here that I don't really want to replace if I mess up, I put a piece of bar stock in here. I used two clamps, got it all squared up and everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, test passes. I'm going to see how much I can remove, I uh, want to see how much vibration there is, and basically this is expendable piece, it's just the tail end of a a piece of bar stock so it's not a, a big deal if I lose a couple inches off of it. So I wanted to try it out and see how well these hold. And actually that's something I really want to uh, talk about I guess in a sense. I really like these clamps. Uh, their holding power is just crazy. I mean there's only two on here and when I go to machining the main platforms uh, I'm going to use four uh, actually, for part of it, I'm only going to use three because uh, when I got to the machining parts, there's some of the where I wanted to put the groove was kind of where I needed to put uh, one of the clamps. So, anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. So, there you go. It's uh, it's not a bad groove. I mean, I was hogging out quite a bit here just to see what the limits were. I'm not, this is nowhere near depth, but I wanted to make sure this is a, a similar kind of bar stock that I'm going to be putting in as the runners. And I wanted to make sure it fit. Uh, right now it's a little tight. And that's another kind of debate I had as I was making these. Whether I was going to go with a friction fit. Or whether I was going to go with something that I'm going to have to bolt into place later. The other thing I wanted to show you here. This is the actual piece that I'm going to be machining for the saw sled. And I just want to show you how I adjusted the clamps. I mean, it's very straightforward. You just raise up the back uh, stop here just so that is just like a fraction. You can just feel it with your finger above the actual plate that I'm going to be uh, clamping down. And then you just screw it in and then I'm going to leave out the long and tedious process of squaring everything up making sure that uh, like when I cut it I'm not cutting it at an angle because uh, you know that's as a machining thing if you really want to see that sort of stuff you can there's plenty of channels that do that. But anyway I have to zero everything and then I didn't have to actually go to as uh, great an extent as you might have to when you think about this sort of thing because you'll see the lead edge, the one that's closest to the left, it's just hanging in the middle of that uh, trough there. There's enough overhang that I can actually, once I'm done cutting the groove, I'll just move uh, the blade over and I will uh, trim that to square to this uh, hole. So it'll actually all be squared up. Uh, it turned out that it was about probably a two thousandth of an inch uh, out of alignment from one end to the other which for me is really good so I'm actually quite happy with that. You also notice when I started this there was already a little bit of a, a well run on it. I did a test pass just to make sure it was uh, at uh, well four inches. <laughs> it actually felt kind of weird. Normally when I'm machining I'm dealing in uh, much smaller numbers uh, but I only need this to be within an eighth of an inch because I want to um, have it fairly close to the blade but not enough where it's going to cause any kind of issues with binding or anything. <laughs> but an eighth of an inch is actually miles when it comes to machining. So there's the first pass. Um, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. I was quite happy with how this is all turning out. Now I need to bring this down to one half of uh, the plate. So I want a quarter of an inch of this as attaching to the bar and the other uh, quarter inch is just going to be for keeping it you know solid. So I've gotten pretty close here now and I'm just going to do another quick pass. You'll notice that the clamp on the left there near the bottom of the screen 
I can't go all the way through because at this point I wasn't entirely certain whether two clamps was going to hold this rigid enough. And by rigid enough, I mean I don't want a variation at all. Uh, so I left that on there, and once I've done this pass, I have to start machining the other side as well. And then what I'll do is I'll just switch the clamp to the other side and then just uh, finish that off. And what I did for the end bit, uh, because, I mean, my milling machine is pretty good, but I want the final, final pass, uh, a very light pass, probably uh, maybe a two thousandth of an inch at most. I wanted to do it all at one go, so I ra actually ran it with just two clamps, and I didn't really have any issues with it at all. It actually did really quite well. But the important thing here, uh, from my perspective anyway, was to make sure when I clamp this into place I did all the procedures without undoing anything except well when I switch one clamp but that's actually not going to cause anything to move there's no way I can move this with my fingers <laughs> it's, it's just not possible so here we are it's uh, uh, half done well half done <laughs> one side's done and then it's going to have to quickly just uh, bring this one down to size it's <laughs> compared to doing the 10 inches this is really quite easy I'm gonna go back and forth here and then the other thing I want to talk about is my uh, table saw it actually has two <laughs> completely different distances from uh, like from the left uh, slot to the blade is about four inches from the right slot to the blade is about five and five eighths inches uh, so when I had to go and do the final uh, the next sheet it was kind of odd because I couldn't set up the same kind of configuration and where everything sat so I had enough travel on uh, the bed of the milling machine and everything I actually had to put a sheet of 1 8 inch acrylic underneath this to give me a little bit of lift but the nice thing about the, that is it's well, obviously perfectly flat and then I just bolted it all down that gave me enough lift on the end so that I can still square up the end which is kind of important now the other thing I've done right here is you'll notice it seems a little wider. Uh, all I did is uh, there was a bit of buildup on the lip. Uh, I just did a light pass on both sides uh, just to smooth that all out to keep it all nice and even. So there you go. The first one's done. Now here's the back end of it. And I'm just going to do uh, just a skimming pass uh, initially. Uh, you can barely see anything flying off there. I really don't want to shorten it any because I already have um, have this one eighth of an inch away from the blade so I don't really want to make it too much shorter but this is where I found out that I was off by about uh, two thousand so it was uh, important to do that so here you go I've, I've put the blade uh, sorry this is the runner this is what's going to fit in the groove on my table saw right now it is a friction fit and I could drift that in with a mallet but because uh, I wasn't really sure how I wanted to attach this uh, so this is just my first run I, I didn't want to do anything excessive like I said many times when you do this sort of thing it's easier to take a little bit more off than it is to try and add it back on because you can't so here is the setup for the second one and you'll notice uh, I have all four clamps in place uh, but I had to the back two had to be done a little bit differently uh, I didn't want to go with two because you know it's, I wasn't entirely sure how well that would all hold uh, so I used the, uh, the four, but I had the back two off at a slight angle. But the nice thing about having it that way is I could do it all at once, and also back and forth for the first few passes. And uh, there you go, this is it. These are sitting the runners. I ended up making it way less than friction fit. You'll see them sliding in. I haven't attached anything. It's just some tape here, and one clamp, and I can move it with two fingers. I'm very happy with that part of it. As you can see, there, there's nothing holding it on here. And I'm going to, in the next video, start attaching all this stuff and start fiddling with what I'm going to do for adding stuff and that sort of thing. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. I will not do a whole lot of machining videos, uh, but I will do some. And I will get back to the main uh, fish ones, uh, like I said, on Friday. And then if this uh, has significant amount of work done on it by next Wednesday, I'll, I'll put up another one. But I will leave that for Wednesdays. Uh, that way uh, my longtime viewers will still get stuff to watch and they don't have to have to watch this. So anyway, thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next video and bye for now.